Well, folks, here we are again. You know what time it is. It's Tuesday, 8 o'clock. Time for another show, another episode of Common Madness with yours truly, A1. And my fucking God, look what the hell has happened since I left you guys. We've had hangings, beatings, tasings, and a rise in police defunding activism. Who would have thought this would have came from one black man's murder? Who would have thought it would have taken this long for it to happen? And here it is right now upon us, right in our faces. We are seeing progress. We are seeing change. Or are we? That is the topic of tonight's show. Because folks, A1 has been doing a lot of thinking. Yes, I've been doing a lot of thinking, quite frankly, a lot of drinking as well. And the drinking goes well with the thinking. But one thing that I have come to the conclusion of is that none of this, and I repeat, none of this could have been possible without Jerome Lemelson. Let me make sure I got this guy's name right. This guy, Lemelson, sorry, forgive me. This guy, we're going to dedicate the show to Jerome Lemelson. No one has heard of this motherfucker. You know why? Because people don't talk about the facts. Truth of it is, without Jerome Lamelson, A1 wouldn't even be online today to even give you this live show, this, this performance, this, this fucking historical backdrop to the occurring events of the time. Let me explain to you why this guy is important, people. This guy is important because this is the guy who invented the camcorder. That's fucking right, people. That little device in your phones that you use to record videos of your friends for Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or whatever the hell it is you're using it for, sex tapes. Some people use it for that, too. Um, it's because of him. 1980. Okay? So... Let's give a shout out to Jerome Lamelson, and let's also give a shout out to Nicholas Falat, who makes very nice champagne. Now, let's get into this thing because I really want to talk about this, this incident at the Wendy's. I watched it. I could not believe it, but I watched it a couple of times. Actually, I've seen it a lot. Quasha, you have too. For some reason, the news always put stuff like this on. We don't hear about anything good. It's only bad things. And I'm getting tired of it. But if you're going to talk about it, let's talk about it, you know? That, that, that's where I'm at with it. And so I watched the video. And people, what I'm going to tell you today, I want to talk to you about the right way to handle a police officer if you are pulled over and you wish to pull over. If you wish to comply... This is what you should do if you're black. Because I don't think a lot of parents have told their kids this. I don't think a lot of people are living in the real world. What I really think is going on is that we're all in a bubble. We're in our bubble surrounded with our friends, our family, and that's it, and our job, okay? Other than that, you don't know anything outside of that little social circle because most of you guys are into the same thing, so this is all you talk about. And it's, it's not something that really comes up a lot of times because a lot of people will say they'll do this, they'll do that. But when it comes down to the come down, they're not going to do shit. So let's talk about what happened with this individual that has caused so much ruckus in Atlanta to where they burnt down the Wendy's. There are mass protests. And then we'll get into a few other topics that I would like to cover today. But when I watched the video of this man who was 27 years old, very young, he did some things that you should never do if you are planning on complying with the law and not going to jail. So, and I hope this doesn't come back to bite me, but it's very fucking true if you're black. You really have to be on top of your game with this shit. Now, he was so drunk that he passed out in the Wendy's drive-thru. I really don't have a problem with that. I, I think, you know... At 27, you don't know how much you can drink. You don't know how many drugs you can do. You are really experimenting. The fact that he had done jail time for so many years really, um, really made it so that he could not experience life. You know, my uncle did 30 years in jail. God bless his soul. He passed away a couple of months ago. 30 years because he didn't snitch. All right. And a plethora of other things. He was no angel by any means, even if he had wings. Um. And when he got out of jail, 
he got drunk every day and he was always trying to get women. And I said, you know, I don't know what you're doing at 73 years old, huh? You know, a lot of stuff that you're trying to say work, man, you might have to put batteries back in it or something, you know? Um, and we used to make jokes about it while he got drunk. But what I saw was he was still trying to live his life from where he missed it at those 30 years he was incarcerated. And I think this happens with a lot of us because a lot of us want to be able to live the life that we would have lived if we had not went to jail. And I believe that's exactly what happened to this young man. So he was not aware of the fact or the protocol to handle these police officers because people, let me tell you something. If he had said things differently, this whole situation would have went differently. We would have never even been here for me to even have a show about it today. Let's get into it. They asked him had he had any drinks. People, if a fucking cop walks up to your goddamn car and you've passed out, make sure you tell that motherfucker if he asks you, have you been drinking, smoking, sniffing, or swallowing anything that's a narcotic? You have not. I repeat, make sure you say no. No, no. Okay? If this man had said no, he'd still be alive because they wouldn't have been able to go ahead. For, they wouldn't have been able to go further into the investigation, do the test or anything like that. They would not have been able to. I'm telling you this. They would not have been able to. This is law. You better look this stuff up because your kids, if you got one, is going to have to deal with something like this in, in the future until we get the cars that can drive themselves 100 percent, which I think we're about 30 years off from. OK, even if you got one of those Teslas, they're pretty fancy, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it. But I'm going to tell you, if this guy had said he had not had any drinks and he had said he had been coming home from work and he was tired from his shift because he was working to support his family. Do you think those police officers would have got him out of the car? No, would have never happened. Another thing to do when you're getting pulled over, if you're not asleep behind the wheel when they catch you, is you want to put your hands out of the window, both of them, to let them know you're not a threat. I know I don't see white people doing this. I don't see Spanish people doing this, but they're not black. So they don't have to follow the same fucking premises. Even though the Spanish are people of color, shout out to my Latino brothers and sisters. I love all of y'all. I love the white people too. I love everybody but the devil. But the truth of it is... People get judged at 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> I know for a fact. You will get profiled. Something may happen if you don't handle this thing right. You've got to be on your wits even if you're at your wits end. Okay? Put your hands out of the window. Let them see you're, you're, you're not a threat and that you respect them. Respect is a big thing. Respect is a very fucking big thing. Because without respect, it, is, it makes life very hard a lot of times to even go through life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might have to deal with situations that require a level of respect mutually. If that mutual respect is not there, you are going to have problems. And you are going to have to establish that respect. Whether it be through intelligence or force, you pick. You should be good enough to decide if you're in that situation and you put yourself in it. Okay? And so this man, when I saw the video, he was so inebriated that he didn't know what to really do. And because he didn't know what to really do, no one told him what to fucking say. He got shot because what he realized was that if he goes to jail, he'll violate his probation. See, this was the backdrop to the story that I couldn't figure out why this guy would fucking fight these police officers like that. Take the taser, shoot the guy with the taser and then try to run off after he did it, which I'm going to also say something else. If you run from the cops, keep running until you can't see him anymore. That's your best bet, people. That's your best fucking bet. If you want to, if you're in the car. And you hit the gas, don't hit the brakes. I bet don't, you don't even want to see a brake light. If you're running on foot, don't stop until you can't see them anymore. If that's what you're going to do. See, one thing that I'm learning about life is this, as I'm getting older. You can't be 50. 
There is no 50 in life. Either you're going to be 100% with it or don't do it at all because 50 don't work. It might help you sometimes. You might fucking be able to toe the line every now and again. But on some real shit, you're going to fucking fail because you 50 and your heart ain't in it. Biggie said it best. Don't make a move unless your heart's in it. Don't do anything unless your heart's in it. Because if you do it and your heart's not in it, people, it's not going to work. There's such a thing called this energy that we put off. It comes from within. But people can feel it. If, 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 if they can't feel it, then it's not there. That's, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. But this guy obviously was 50 with it. He didn't realize what was going on. Because if he did, he would have fucking ran from the beginning. Okay? If he had realized what was going on, I guess he thought that the cops were being nice to him because they were going to let him go. How naive is that after doing so many, so many years for, for whatever it is he did? I don't want to get into it because it takes away from the conversation a protocol to follow when you're being arrested or interrogated by the police. But if this guy wasn't 50 and had not been baited in by these, this, this snake's tongue while they were questioning him about his drinking that day, and if he had not said he had a few margaritas, which I don't know who the fuck told him to say that, but if, if he had not, none of this shit would have happened. And so I'm not exactly sure what was going through this guy's mind because I don't know what he was drinking, but none of this should have happened. But the other thing I'm going to say to you is don't go for the cop's taser. Who does that? That just is not smart. OK, and you, 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 you're throwing you're throwing kerosene on the fire, people. Don't do that. Don't go for the gun. Just run. Try to get the hell out of there if that's what you're going to do. If you go for the taser, what you're going to do is if you don't tase the guy and he's able to follow you like this guy was followed. He probably will shoot you. Or they might get you and put you in a chokehold and break your neck. Because by law, they're authorized to kill if they feel threatened and their life is on the line. You, by law, are not. And so therein lies the problem as well. Because now you have to fight the police culture and the culture of the Senate that has set these guidelines so that Police can enforce the laws of this great godly nation, even if it's ungodly as the devil's sanctuary in hell. People, I'm going to say this to you. If you didn't learn anything from this guy, learn that. Always be respectful. And whatever you do, do it 100. Because if you don't, you're going to have problems. I really don't want to base the whole show on this, but this is such a big topic because I myself have had to deal with police brutality. You know, I used to make a joke. I say, you're not a nigga unless you got beat by the police. And, 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 you know, my friends would laugh at me for that. You know, they would laugh, they would laugh, or at least, or at least you're not a nigga unless you fought the police. You know what I mean? And people would laugh at this statement because they don't even understand what the fuck a nigga's really saying, okay? What I'm really trying to say is that, man, if you have not faced injustice by the law, then you ain't on the side of us. That's what I was really saying. But you know how people are when they start smoking weed, drinking gin and tequila and, and rum? They don't have a clear grip on what the fuck motherfuckers are saying. Most likely they are only interested in you passing the joint to them. OK, I mean, that's just life. What can you do? But that's what I was really saying. That's exactly what I was really saying. Because if you have not faced injustice, if you have not faced oppression, if you have not faced people telling you your shit because of your skin or you can't come in because of how you look, you're never going to understand what people are talking about because you're not going to be able to relate. A fucking movie, a song, a book is not going to give you the perspective that you need. I think that's exactly why a lot of these white protesters are out there, besides the fact that a lot of them are being paid. And we're going to get into that, too, because I don't think a lot of people understand who the fuck is funding this whole goddamn movement. Who 
the fuck is funding all this anarchy? Who the fuck is funding all this political activism to defund the police? Which I actually do not think is a good idea in a lot of ways. We're going to get into that too. But one of the things that I want to talk about is that if the devil is funding your organization, does that mean that your organization by default is evil? Good question, I know. I would honestly say yes, because the intentions are there that make it evil, that make it dishonorable, that make it bad. And so let's talk about who's funding Black Lives Matter, which is something that never gets talked about by anybody, because we're all so caught up in becoming equal as black people, even though a lot of black folks are really Native American, which a lot of us don't even realize. How many people do you know that are black that say, I got Indian in my family? What the fuck do you think they're really saying to you? You see what I'm saying? <sighs> Anyways, let's talk about it. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar or have even heard of an individual by the name of George Soros. A very interesting person. He watched his own people get murdered while he stood by when he was a child as a Jew. I don't know why he did it. I don't know what made him do it. I don't know why he didn't speak out besides the fact he was a child. I, I think his age when I read about this when he was 13. But it says something to me. It says a lot to me. And one of the things that I'll say that it says is that you only care about your fucking self. And, um, well, that's pretty fucking selfish. But... Forget that. We could talk about the countries that he's helped create anarchy in and political unrest in for years that no one has ever even brought up. No one. This guy has been behind so many coups, plots to overthrow governments, murders, assassinations, you name it, he did it. And now he's funding Black Lives Matter. Now, I am all for Black Lives Matter because what it's saying is that we matter too. But what I'm not for is people using our people for their own fucking gain. That I'm not for. Because that's what they've been doing to us for years. A lot of you people don't know, but a lot of people who were standing right next to Martin Luther King on that goddamn balcony where he was assassinated, knew about the assassination. They knew about it. And instead of, instead of them saying something to MLK, they let that man get shot. And he was a good man. Fighting for every last one of us so that we could fucking walk in the same goddamn bathroom as another motherfucker who's lighter skinned than us or white. We'll say white. I didn't believe it at first, but Dick Gregory shone light on it. He showed the video where the pastor admitted that he stepped out of the way of the line of fire so that the goddamn sniper could have a clear shot. I wouldn't have believed it, people, until I saw it with my own two eyes. And that's when the horror set in, because I knew we weren't going to get anywhere in this goddamn movement. We've been fighting for the same fucking thing for over 200 years. Where the fuck have we gotten? Huh? Oh, we can work in the same place? We can fucking use the shit in the same toilet? We can drink from the same water fountain? But no, that doesn't make you equal. Don't be fooled, people. That doesn't make you equal. That does not make you equal. They killed all our leaders. They killed everybody who was not with them. That's why the ones who are left, you better start questioning these motherfuckers. Question them. Because somebody's lying. Something's fishy, and it's not the anchovies on my pizza. No fucking way I'm going to go to college for 200 years, and I'm not going to graduate. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. What it means is I'm not going to fight the same goddamn fight and not fucking make any headway after a while, which is exactly where we are as a people. 
Everybody's active. Oh, activism. Come on. Think about it. We've been fighting the same goddamn fight for so fucking long. I'm sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. But we still got to keep fighting because they've infiltrated us. And nobody seems to recognize it. That's why every goddamn protester that I'm looking at is white, I think. Because they might be the ones being paid. No one ever thought about this shit. And they let those motherfuckers go into the black neighborhoods and burn down all the black businesses. They've been wanting to do that shit for years. And they finally got a way to do it with a golden ticket to get out of jail. You know what I've fucking seen? That wrong is good. Bad is right. Up is down. Down is up. You know where I saw something like this? Let me show you guys. I'm going to show you guys. Because people don't believe you unless you show them shit. People will not believe you unless you show them shit. Now, hey, do me a favor. Zoom in on this. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. You got to look at this. You won't believe it unless I show it to you. Bad is good. Down is up. Happy is sad. Wrong is right. Truth is fiction. Bliss is ignorance. And there's one more I can't read because of the red chairs in the office. But that's exactly where we're headed, people. We're heading to the opposite of things. And what I found out was that this is the ideology of a man who was once considered to be the most wickedest man in the world, Alistair Crowley. People don't know about this guy. He is supposedly the father of Barbara Bush. He's also supposedly the father of a lot of evil things that people are doing to this day and um he is the father of the statement do as you want do as you do what thou wilt. do what you want do what you feel you kind of get the picture of how this thing has fucking evolved over the last hundred or so years okay this is the same guy alistair crowley who fucking killed 500 boys in one year and i think ate them and had sex with them don't get me to lying look it up for yourself i'm quite sure this guy has a lot of literature out there that people are into but this whole fucking ideology that painting that came from that rich man's house i'm not going to mention his name but it came from his fucking house <laughs> that is what they're into and what I'm noticing is the rich ones are always the ones into this kind of shit. It's not the regular people. It's the ones that are so high up on the totem pole you never see them. They have a house in the clouds with a castle and a maid with wings. It's time you wake up, people. I've said this now for the, this is, I've said it on a few shows. I want to get back to my comedy, but this really needs to be addressed because the truth of it is there's a lot of stuff being fed to you that you don't know is bad. They made looting okay. I've heard so many people say in the last week, I don't care about the looting. I can understand that. You can understand about people destroying black businesses in black neighborhoods where black people work and the same black people that are fighting for equality are going to be the same ones in two months saying they don't have a fucking job. Are you fucking kidding me? I wish I was out there because I'd have shot that motherfucker. I'd have shot him for trying to destroy a black business. I'd have shot him for even trying to destroy this goddamn business. Shit. Why are you going to try to destroy a small business out of all the goddamn things to destroy? Fucking, you could go destroy Target. Who cares? They're worth billions. They're not going to feel it. People work 30 years to get a goddamn business, to pass something, to be able to, 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 to contribute to the community in a good way besides drugs. People worked a long time to get these businesses and you're just going to come down and burn them, burn them in a night <sighs> on purpose under the guise of fucking fighting for civil rights. You bastards. If I could, I'd go to your mother's house and spit on her. That's right. I'd spit on her because she fucked up with you. She should have swallowed you. This shit has got to stop. Somebody's got to be held accountable. There's got to be justice. Since you want to be an outlaw, you need to be brought to justice for this kind of act. 
And it needs to be said because nobody's saying it on CNN, Fox News, TBS, TNT, or anything like that. They're all fucking in line with this shit. Because nobody wants to speak out about it because they're getting paid. And if you take away the money, they know they ain't shit. Where's your goddamn heart, man? Woman. There's women in on this shit, too. It's just mind-boggling. Insane, even. Insane. Pains my soul as an American. Pains my soul as a businessman. Pains my soul as a child of God. Under Christ the King. It pains my soul to see these things. And it pains my soul that society is falling right in line with the ideologies of the evil things. Doesn't make any sense to me. Except for nothing makes sense anymore. And so nothing should make sense. Nothing should make sense anymore. That's what they're leading us to. That's what everything is becoming. Pretty soon, people. Pretty soon, people. You don't know what the hell might happen next. They all. Let me tell you something. One of the things that I, I realized was how McDonald's became trillionaires. This is going to sound crazy. I used to go there every fucking Saturday with my dad, and he used to buy me the triple stack pancakes with the, the hash browns and the sausage. They didn't have bacon, but who gives a fuck? That shit was good. Anyways, I used to eat like six or nine pancakes because I love to eat. And I used to always get their cheeseburgers and the chicken nuggets. The chicken nuggets were my favorite. You know, up until the point where I found out it wasn't real meat. And then something happened to me about two years ago. I stopped eating McDonald's all the way. It's very good. But come to find out, none of their beef products were real up until a year ago. That's how they got rich. Selling people a lie. And they were able to do so because the FDA was complicit in the knowledge that they were doing this and approved it. You see where I'm going with this, people? The FDA was complicit in the knowledge that they were doing this. And because of that, our own government allowed them to sell us fake shit for so fucking long that they were able to get rich off of it. We bought that burger under the idea, the auspice of the fact that it may have been real beef. Who the fuck was I? When you're fucking two, it's two in the morning. You're high as shit. Man, you just want a fucking burger and you want something that's not going to make you sick. Man, you'll go places like that. I used to go to, uh, damn, I forgot the name of the carol right across from Howard University. They had really good chicken wings with the mumbo sauce and the fries with the salt and pepper and the ketchup until I got sick one night. Then I never went back there again. But it was always real chicken. Everywhere I've ever went to, it's always been real chicken. But McDonald's was somehow able to circumvent the system and give motherfuckers fake beef, fake, fake chicken. God knows what else was fake that we ate that we didn't know about. Maybe even the McRib was fake. God forbid. I like the McRib, but the McRib might have been fake. The McRib might have been fake. I don't know. I have no idea. What I do know is this, I hate being lied to, and that's how they got rich. They got rich off of lying. Do you know how many other people have gotten rich off of lying in this country in America? A ton, a ton, a ton, okay? Some of the biggest, most wealthiest people have gotten rich off of a lie. Medicines have done it. Doctors have done it with treatments that didn't work which I guess could be falling in this, the medicine. Um, food, food providers have done it. McDonald's, and, McDonald's for example. Um, there's been a lot of con artists, but not everybody who cons you, you meet in the street. Some of the, the best ones are on, on Wall Street. Or they wear a suit with those $1,000 Cartier glasses. And you see them come in, they command attention, but they only command attention because you don't know really what they're up to. If you knew what they were up to, you would never listen. But we've got to get away from the lies. We've got to get away from the 
the rhetoric that they're trying to direct you to believe in, to eat, to feed off of, like a vulture eating dead carcasses on the street. We've got to get you away from the lies. We've got to get you into the truth. But what is true? Let me tell you what's going on. People are just watching the news. They're listening to their friends and nobody's really looking into anything. Because see, people, what I'm reading on Yahoo with the comments is amazing. A lot of people think that that man was justified to be shot in the back twice by officers because he supposedly feared for their life, feared for his life. The officers feared for their life, excuse me. But it doesn't add up if he's running away from them and he's shooting at them with a non-lethal weapon as a taser. I think the cop got mad and his pride caused him to kill the guy. That's why it really happened. But people aren't talking about pride. People aren't talking about equality. At least a lot of people aren't. People are only talking about what they feel like they can relate to or affects them as a person. That's why there's a ton of people saying you should have shot him and there's nothing wrong with what you did. There is something wrong with what you did. Now let's get into that. If I'm running away from you, how in the hell does that make me a threat to you? Okay? You know what people are saying? People are saying that since he was drunk, he was going to crash his car and kill somebody. Yes, but he was sleeping in the car if he was drunk. So how was he going to crash it if he was sleeping? And not only that, how the fuck was he going to crash it if he asked to walk to his mother's or sister's house through the woods? He wouldn't have. Wasn't there a better protocol for this thing to have been worked out without anyone being tased or shot? I'll tell you what really happened. The cops, after questioning this man, the cops decided that they had a DUI on their hands. Once you tell a police officer that you've had a drink, even if it was seven hours ago, he's going to assume that you're lying. That's what they're trying to do. Do you know the state makes so much revenue off your DUIs, people, that they can support the whole goddamn judicial system maybe off of 100 cases? You know how many DUIs they get a year? It's... Uh, and the thing is, the funny thing is, they use these unions, these groups, these organizations to promote what they want to be policed. I want you to think about it. Back before DUIs were a common thing or back before they were a prime source of revenue for law enforcement, no one talked about it. My grandfather lived in Virginia. He was dark as shit. I love that motherfucker. He's dead. He died at 87. He was a great man. But I bring up his skin tone, not to shed light on my ethnic background. No. Only to tell you that when he was drunk at night in Montpelier, Virginia, <laughs> he was escorted home by the police. What the fuck does that tell you to make sure he got home safe? What does that tell you? That means that the culture at that time, before these goddamn marketing, uh, marketing for DUIs and these organizations that were made to basically shine a spotlight on an issue that really is not that big of a deal. It happens, but it's it happens everywhere, and it shouldn't be made out to be what it is, but because... It has been. Now we're in the situation that we're in where you might have to pay $10,000 for a lawyer to get you off. Anything that is profit, anything that is profit driven is evil in its own way. If it, if it, if it, if it, if it is used to discipline an adult, let me tell you what the hardest fucking thing is in life. There's a couple of things. One of them is finding a wife for a man. As a heterosexual male, I truly understand how hard it is to find a fucking wife. That is a very hard thing, especially in D.C. Another fucking thing is that I've learned is very hard is to discipline an adult. Disciplining adults is very hard. But if you do discipline an adult, please make sure that you do it in a way that is honest and honorable. Okay? A lot of times, man, niggas been getting disciplined in the same way that they discipline dogs. They shoot them. Might lock them in a cage. Might not feed them. You know, a lot of stuff, right? A lot of stuff. Um, but try to make it honest. 
But I'm getting back. Let me get back to my grandfather. They escorted this guy home. You know how many times that happened? Now, do you think they would escort you home? No. They might. Or they might just let you go on your own recognizance if you can talk your way out of it. But a lot of times, what they're going to do is they're going to try to take your ass to jail because you're generating revenue for the state. You're putting money into the system every time you got to get a lawyer, every time you pay a traffic ticket, every time you pay a fine from those photo cameras. And that's the other thing. Everybody's fucking rioting. Everybody's fucking destroying property. Everybody's fucking being a hooligan, a lunatic, a deranged motherfucker. And nobody destroyed the, the camera, the cameras for the tickets. Come on. Do something fucking useful. That shit has been a scourge in the city for years. And this shit doesn't stop accidents. They put that shit on straightaways where no one ever gets hit. Look it up. City council has been approving this shit for years. They've made over a billion dollars in the last five years. Look it up. If you don't fucking believe A1, look it up. Challenge me. I want you to come and say, hey, you were wrong. You know why? Because if I'm wrong, I want to make sure I get it right the next time I talk about it. Because then I'll adjust my fucking viewpoint. But the truth of it is they've made a billion dollars. And what the fuck? Go outside and drive on the street. If shit's like goddamn Afghanistan. You got to have a tank to drive through this motherfucker. I know. I busted five tires driving through this area. Actually, six. And I busted one on 395 in this great state of Virginia. They fixed that pothole, though. You think the one that caused me to get the fucking damaged tire in D.C. was fixed? Hell no. Because they're fucking spending more money on more speed traps. Speed traps that don't even work. If you get one ticket, you think you're going to get another one? Most likely, no. It's all bullshit, people. They're doing it in the name of public safety. And the whole time, they're taking your fucking money. I don't agree with it. I never will. I'm not stupid. I don't think you are either. But what I'm going to say is this, people. I hope you've able, been able to take something from this. And please... Do not do anything stupid like grab the cop's gun or taser in an altercation. That's not smart unless you've got some other idea in your mind. If you are trying to comply with the law, don't do that. People don't like it when you do that. This is pretty good champagne. Folks, I think I'm going to bring this one to an end. This is A1, wishing you a happy evening, a great weekend, and I pray that you all have a good life until I see you again, and then you have an even better one. Now remember, people are watching everything you do, because there's cameras everywhere, but God is too. And on that note, people, you all have a great night, and I'll see you again next week, Tuesday, 8 o'clock, same time, same channel. Take care.